Uh, but now we're heading into the chamber and this morning we're looking at filing for tax relief. Um, though a majority of people have heard about tax relief, um, they have no idea the benefits of filing and um, let alone how to go about filing. Um, what are tax reliefs and what types are there and who qualifies? All these and other questions are what we'll be asking this morning. But um, before we get into the discussion, let's take a look at this. Right. Okay. So my expert this morning, and he is an expert. He's a tax attorney, an expert tax attorney, uh, William Kofiusu Demitia. He was here last week, and he's back again to educate us some more on filing for tax reliefs. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Right. So this morning we are looking at um, some of the different types of tax reliefs, and most importantly, how to go about filing for tax reliefs. Because even though a lot of people know about um, tax relief, they don't know how to go about it. So maybe you can shed some more light. But first of all, um, just for the benefit of people who didn't watch last week, what are tax reliefs? Okay. Thank you very much and good morning to your viewers. Uh, tax release in its simplest form, it's any amount or allowance that the law permits a person, either an individual or a corporate entity, to deduct from their taxable income and they pay tax on the remainder of it. So it's just a social arrangement or program that the law recognizes that can make you effectively reduce the amount of taxes that you pay as an individual or a corporate entity. And this is legal, the law permits The it. law permits it. And yeah. every single person is entitled to it. Yes, if you fall within the criteria, you are entitled to receive it, depending on what it is. So okay. as we go into the types, we'll see what who, they okay, are. And who, and who falls who under falls which under one. Okay, so let's go to, into the, the types. What are the different types of tax? Relief? Okay, so for individuals, personal tax, Personal tax reliefs are found under Section 39 of the Internal Revenue Act, passed in 2000, Act 592. Under that, there are a number of them. The first one is what we call dependency relief. Uh, some people classify it as marriage relief. But what it means is that if you have a dependent spouse or at least two dependent children, you are entitled to a tax relief of 200 Ghana CDs when you file your return. Is it per child? Or no, uh, the, the, the criteria says either a dependent spouse or at least two dependent children. Okay. So, so it doesn't matter whether you have two or five children. Yes. Still so 200. Yes. If you have a dependent child, then you are entitled to that. And if you have a dependent spouse, meaning someone who provides the necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, you can claim that relief. Meaning that person must not be in any form of employment. That, that person may be, but uh, what the law just says is that you provide the necessaries of life. So if you can really prove that in spite of that employment is not enough and okay. that you still provide the necessaries of life, you should be able to, to get that. Okay. Initially, when the act was passed, it said that anyone who is a dependent individual cannot earn more than 20 Ghana cities. But it was amended and that provision was taken out. So now the only test is you providing the necessaries of life. Okay. And if you can prove that, you are entitled to that relief. Okay. Yes. So apart from that, there's a disability relief. And that if you are a person with disability and you are engaged in business or employment, you are entitled to 25% deduction of your total oh, income okay. from business and employment. So we, we're talking about, let's just be honest, we're talking about... Um, people with disabilities, but who are in employment. So we're not talking about the beggars on the road and no. people in the wheelchairs who are going around begging. So you see you that must it, have a job. You must have a job. So it's restricted to income from business and employment, in spite of your impairment. Because a, a person with disability under the Persons with Disability Act of 2006, Act 715, it defines it as any person with a physical, mental, or sensory impairment that creates barriers for the person in enjoying the person's normal life activity. So if you have that, whatever income you make from business or employment, you are entitled to a relief of up to 25% of that amount. Does it matter what kind of business you're into? What kind of no, it doesn't matter. So it, it doesn't could be petty trading, it could be anything. all the way up to maybe uh, management or anything? Anything. Okay. So far as you have an impairment and you have a disability and you still, despite your disability, are willing to work, you are entitled to that relief. I like that phrase. Despite your disability, you are willing to work. So it's not just for people who are on the streets begging. Yes, it's but not just for Someone will say that's a form of employment. I mean, the people who are on the streets begging, isn't it? They well, make an income at the end of the day. Well, well, that's really <laughs> not income. That is uh, a gift. 
that you receive uh, a gift is defined under the act as a receipt for which there is inadequate or no consideration okay. at all Great. so that that will pass by under a gift and they're supposed to pay gift tax okay. if it's more than 15 percent <laughs> you're supposed to pay gift tax of 15 percent on the amount mm, so we yes. should be taxing these burgers yes okay I mean, uh, <laughs> all right that's a topic yes. for another day yes. so we've talked about um the spouse um the marriage and then the people and you're dependent on somebody yes. you talked about yes um, and uh, apart from that if you are 60 years and above and you are engaged in employment you are either you have income from business or from employment you are entitled to 200 Ghana retirement cities. age 16 it is but some people are engaged after that on contract basis okay. so they could be on a contract base engaged or they could have a business that they are running mm -hmm. and when you're running your own business mm -hmm. there's no retirement, retirement age, age. Okay. so you're entitled to a relief of either 200 Ghana cities or the total amount of your income whichever is less so you are whichever is less whichever That's is not less fair. So, if you earn less than 200 Ghana cities, you're entitled to relief for all of it. If you earn more than 200 Ghana cities, we'll give you a relief for 200 Ghana cities. Okay, so, so this 200 Ghana cities, is it monthly? Is it weekly? No. Is it it's when you file your returns at the end of the year. That is what you're entitled oh, to. So, it's just yes. an annual? Yes, it's an annual relief. So, okay. yes. And apart from that, if you have children, if you have children in registered, recognized educational institutions in Ghana, if you sponsor them, you are entitled to a relief of 200 Ghana cities per child, up to a maximum of three children. Please say that again. Okay. So if you have children in any registered, recognized educational institution in Ghana, you sponsor them, you all pay the their fees. All the way from kindergarten, all daycare the way. to... Yeah, so it just says registered, recognized okay. educational institution. You are entitled to 200 Ghana cities per child, up to a maximum of three children. Oh. So... I, I mean, maybe it's, it's more of a family <laughs> planning measure, but the law is saying that there's a limit to, to which, which we can give. Mm. So if you have up to a maximum of three children, we'll allow you 200 Ghana cities per child. And you realize that a father and, and, and the, I mean, the, the father and the mother can, are both eligible to claim. But the law is saying that oh, since both of them are, wait. we will restrict it to just one individual. So one per family? Yes. Yeah, so if the, mother, if the mother claims, the father, father cannot, cannot claim. claim. Ah, yes, because both of them, there. because mm -hmm. both of them may say they are sponsoring, okay. because the sponsoring doesn't have to just be the the fees. You could be buying the uniform, you could be buying books Feeding or anything. So since both of them are eligible, just one person can claim that. Per family. Yes. Per family. Wow, that, this is, this might come as news to a lot of people. Do mm -hmm. do we know about this that you can claim for such? Well, uh, but I I don't know if most people know, but that is what the law says. You are entitled to that so long as. You sponsor the person in a recognized educational institution. Apart from that, you also have uh, people who have dependent relatives who are 60 years or more. And you are entitled to 100 Ghana cities per person for two people. And that one too, because several people may be eligible, we're restricted to one just to one family. individual. Mm -hmm. And if you are engaged in any training that improves your professional or vocational or technical knowledge, you are given 400 Ghana cities every every year as a relief from that. So these are the personal reliefs under 39. But apart from that, we have life insurance under section 57. So if you take a life insurance policy in Ghana cities from a life insurance company in Ghana, the law is saying it will give you a tax relief. The relief, we compare three different things. We'll compare the premiums you are paying, we'll compare 10% of the sum you are assured from the insurance and 10% of your accessible income or your total income from business, employment, and investment. That's a lot of money. And then we would give you the lesser of the three. <laughs> so either the premium, either the 10% the of the sum, one which one is less, would give you that one as a relief. Okay, and then no. there's also contribution to social security under the three-tier pension scheme as well. That is also allowed as a relief. You deduct it before you pay taxes. Are there any more reliefs? Uh, there could be more. But these are generally the ones that apply to individuals as we found them. So the pensions one, you'd realize that you, uh, the employee mandatory, you're supposed to contribute 5.5 percent of your income, basic income, to that scheme. If you contribute to that, you're entitled to a relief. Again, the, th the third tier, you can contribute up to 16.5 percent of your annual basic salary. When you contribute that, you're also entitled to that as a relief as well before you okay, pay so your taxes. So all these are just for individuals. Yes. So there's some for um, businesses as well. Yes. Okay, we don't have a lot of time for that today, yes. so we'll just stick to... But even with this one, do you think that um, enough education has been done? Do people know? 
I, I, I think that... In your that daily endeavors, do you come across people who know these things? For, for most people, in the self-employed people, most of them don't know, just because they don't file the taxes and their tax returns and then they are not told about it. For, but for the employees... There should be a mechanism where they are informed about it because who the should be informing us? Who should be doing this education? Well, for them, so obviously, it, it looks like a lot of us do not know the law. Yes, we just don't know. For for the employees, I think that there should be a coordination between uh, the various agents, be the HR or the finance and the individuals. My understanding, they must educate their uh, my understanding is that HR is supposed to have data on every uh, employee in the in the institution, and so you are supposed to have. Uh, data say on persons who are married, persons with disability, and all that. And advise you accordingly? Yes, and financial, they are supposed to pay their salary. So when they are paying, they are deducting. And so there should be a coordination you between should, these yeah. two separate or functional areas in the institution so that they can be able to give these people the release. What the law says is that for the personal release I mentioned under Section 39, in order to prevent abuse, you have to get a tax relief card. And that is given by the GRA and then it will show the release you are entitled, entitled to. to. So I think various institutions should encourage the employees to go and get these relief cards and so that they present it to them because under Section 81 of the Act... Because if you have the card, then it's pretty straightforward and It's simple pretty straightforward. Because it tells yes. you exactly which ones you what, are entitled to. What you are entitled to. Do you think government has a role to play in here? I mean, in as much as they make a lot of noise educating us on the need for us to pay taxes, isn't there a need for them to tell us which ones we are you know, uh, we need, we can uh, claim for. Yeah, I, I well. think, I think, yes, basically, the, the, that's FCC. something, uh, that's something that National Civic, uh, Center for Civic Education and, and GRA would have to double up. But I think they are doing their best. I always say that looking at the resource constraints to all these institutions, they are doing their best. So it is incumbent on some of us who know, and today I'm here doing my civic responsibility, educating the public, some of us who know to go out and spread the word in our own small way. And so I think that with that, we can achieve uh, the desired impact by okay. letting people be informed. Uh, one step at a time. Yes. Okay, so now that people know, can they claim for previous years? Can you go and play? This is my last question to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's a relief you get before you file your returns at the end of the year. And so uh, typically, if you're a resident individual for tax purposes, you could have claimed it. But because it's in yesterday, yes, you can't go back and amend it and claim the relief. If, if you have all the documents to show. If you have all the, if it were income, properly so-called income that you did underestimated or overestimated, you could amend. But for the release, it's something you take before you pay the taxes and okay. it goes with the wind. And so technically you can't go back and say, so I'm amending, amending my return to claim all these the way release. For 10 years. For 10 for years, years and all. No, you can't do that. But going forward, prospectively, I think that people can take the step and then take these release Relief as it applies yes. to them. Okay, now yes. finally, all these unclaimed monies, where do they go? Well, technically, they are not unclaimed monies, but it, it still goes to the, to, to the consolidated fund because what happens is so that... The government, it goes back to government. It goes back. back. Government covers. Yes, okay. because all it's right, My director is ready to pull okay. us both of this. <laughs> That's all the time we have today, okay. but I'm very sure you're going to come back again either sometime this week or next week, and we can continue this, especially since we didn't look at the one for um, businesses. Okay. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, William okay. Kofi Owusu Demitia is an expert tax attorney, and he'll be here again later to shed some more um, light about claiming various types of... Um, Beliefs. Um, this has been the Chamber. Thank you for watching. Um, stay tuned. We have more coming up after the break.